And welcome to our worship on this final Wednesday in March, a breezy day. Next week is a special week. Can you believe it that next week is Holy Week already? Next week we will have um, a special chapel this on a week from today, it'll be April 5th at 3 p.m. Chaplain Anita will be speaking on Jesus entering Jerusalem. This coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. And we also have the, the special group that will be here, the singers and the the singers and the signers, I think is their name. They'll be signing sign languaging some songs for us next week. I'm not sure how to say that, but we can look forward to that next Wednesday. Also, next Thursday, we will have here in the chapel at 6.30 p.m. a Maundy Thursday service. And you might wonder what that is. It's a, a time of open to the entire campus. So it'll be a public service um, open to uh, each person here in the healthcare center or um, assisted living, but as well as independent living, may come and worship with us and remember Christ's journey to the cross. And we will be taking communion. So it'll be a special time and we hope that you can join us. And then the next day on Good Friday on channel two, from 11 to 5, uh, Stations of the Cross will be showing on, on your TV, Channel 2. Chaplain Anita has put that together for us. So next week is a special week with something each day, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I do believe there will also be Bible study on the parables. So um, this week and next week, come to the Mullet Place Theater if you're in assisted living for Bible studies on Thursday tomorrow at 3.30, and in healthcare in the Blue, Spru Blue Spruce Dining Room on Fridays at 10 a.m. And if you're an independent living, join me and some residents at Hickory Homes on Wednesdays at 9. Lots of enriching activities in the coming days. I do want to let you know, too, that in two weeks, we will have a special Easter service. We will have the choir, and I can't remember their new name, but the show, well, do you know? I think it's Walter Singers. 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 The men and women of Showalter Villa, as well as some from the community, will be here on the 12th for a special Easter celebration, and they will also return the next evening for an evening program, so, and those will be public also. Well, I want to say a special thank you to Faith Wenger for playing for us today and to Lance Diener, who will be leading our worship, our singing today. And for those of you who have been here for a while, you might recognize a familiar face. Our preacher for today is our former chaplain, Gary Blaine. And he has graciously come um, today to share with us what has been on his heart recently and it's so good to have you back Gary and to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Well, as we now want to shift our thoughts and our hearts onto God, I lost my, or my, my call to worship. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. For our call to worship, it's on the back of your order of worship. This is based on Psalm 16, which Chaplain Anita and I will be reading in its entirety in a few minutes. But I would invite you to read the bold print, the dark print, with me, and then I'll read the light print. So let's um, shift our hearts and minds to God. Join me. We gather today, O God, to worship you. We love you, O Lord, for you have heard our supplications. What shall we return to you for all your goodness to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. We offer you thanksgiving in the presence of all people. Praise the Lord. Amen. I invite you to turn to your hymnals to page 59. Sing praise to God, 59. Sing praise. 
is to God who reigns above the high God of all creation, the God of power, the God of love, the God of salvation. With healing balm, my soul is filled, and every faith is murmured still to God in praise and glory. What in Almighty by was made God gracious mercy keeper by morning glory evening say God's watchful arm never sleeper with evening sound of God's might praise and glory. Our God is never far away through our dark distressing and ever present up and stay our peace and joy and blessing. Gentle leaves and chosen hand to God our praise and glory. Then all my glass away along, I sing of long the high praises that all may hear. And we, we heed raises Be joyful in the Lord my heart So on and body Bear your part to God our praise Chaplain Gary, in preparation for hearing his sermon called God's Ears, has requested that we read Psalm 116. So Chaplain Anita and I will do that together. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and supplication, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my ears from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith, even when I said I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation, and I call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. 
I am your servant, the child of your serving maid. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Chaplain Gary. Good afternoon. It's great to be with you today. Someone asked, what have you been up to lately? And I said, well, not much. I am still the pastor at the Highland Trinity United Church of Christ. I'm still writing both a blog and two books. And I have engaged in a certification. It's 65 hours. I mean, that's almost a master's degree, right? Yeah. In religious trauma. So I'm loving that and growing with that, both in my own personal but also professional capacities. It's great to be with you. Have you ever had the experience of a small child climbing up beside you on the couch or into your lap and saying, Daddy, I gotta tell you a secret. And my little girl stands up beside me, puts her face in my ear and cups her hand at the side of my head. Of course, her whisper is loud enough for everyone in the room to hear. Now, I love that memory because there is such an innocent trust from child to father that says, I can tell you anything. I am reminded of Richard Jones's poem, After Work. Coming up the subway into the cool Manhattan evening, I feel rough hands on my heart. Women in the market yelling over rows of tomatoes and peppers. Old men sitting on a stoop playing cards. Cabbies cursing each other with their fists while the music of church bells sails over the street. And the father, angry and tired, after working all day, embracing his little girl, kissing her, mi vida, mi corazón, brushing her hair out of her eyes so she can see. I remember as a little boy riding in the back of the car sitting on my mother's lap. We were on our way to the Red Barn, our favorite steakhouse near Tampa, Florida. My father and grandfather were in the front spe seat speaking men talk, but I could not hear what they said for the wind blowing through the open windows. My head was on my mother's chest and she was singing as usual. The music of her voice vibrated through my head down to my toes. It was one of the most absorbing moments of my childhood. I felt transported into a sphere of love and security. I did not dare raise my head for fear of losing the memory. I would like to suggest to you this afternoon that this is the intimate relationship God invites us to. This is the God that Jesus called Abba, Daddy. This is the God we call Mama, Mother. This is the God of the 116th Psalm that was just read to you. I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Did you hear that? Sometimes scripture, even the Psalms, seem formal, despite the fact that they are recognized as universal prayers, regardless of religious affiliation. The Psalms are frequently read more than any other book in the Bible. 
But the language is getting archaic and uses themes and metaphors such as Sheol that are no longer common speech or cultural experience. Now, I'm hoping that you will allow me a moment of teaching that will put the 116th Psalm into context so that we can go back into this very intimate and compassionate poem. Now, Psalms 113 through 118 are known as the Hallel Psalms, which are sung during Passover. Hallel means praise. Now, this cluster of Psalms recites the major themes of Passover from the Exodus in, in Egypt, the giving of Torah, the revival of the dead, and the difficulties the nation will endure preceding the Messianic age. Psalm 116 can be read as both an individual poem of thanksgiving and a communal one. Like Passover itself, the context of the prayer is in one of great suffering and loss, yet also filled with thanksgiving for the presence of God and the grace of God throughout misery and pain. The psalmist is thankful because God has done what? Listened. He wrote, he inclined his ear to me. That is to say, God stretched his ear to the poet so that the poet could hear better so that God could hear better. Now, maybe you saw the animated film, The Incredibles. Mrs. Incredible, known as Elastigirl, could stretch any part of her body to do everything from vacuuming the house while standing in one place to grabbing a kid with one hand and the other had they've been in different places. Perhaps, too, you can imagine the divine ear stretching out or up or down to hear the voice of God's children. In Eastern religious tradition, wisdom is represented as long ears. Statues and paintings of Buddha depict him with extraordinarily long ears, also Lao Tzu. I write or speak thousands of words a week as chaplain, minister, and author. But did you know that my first responsibility is to listen? I have long insisted that people can do the work of chaplains. Now, I don't want to put Jill or Anita out of work, but anybody can do our job. They have to show up, shut up, and listen. And hopefully every sermon, prayer, meditation, or article is a reflection on what I and they have been hearing. In 1957, Ralph G. Nichols and Leonard Stevens wrote an article for the Harvard Business Review entitled, Listening to People. They reported that 80%, 80% of commercial business depended on listening. Think about that. Before you design and engineer a new product, or build the product, write the first advertisement for it, or film the first commercial, you have to listen. Listen to customers. Listen to their needs and their interests. Listen to the services they are requesting. If you cannot hear them, you cannot serve them. You cannot market to them. And you cannot sell them. My experience with every human being I have ever known is they want to be heard. When you hear someone telling uh, others about their story, this is important. 
Their story is worth hearing and may be worth hearing several times. The other day, a friend of mine told me about her decision to enter into hospice services. It's the hardest decision I've ever made in my life, she said. Now, this is not the first conversation we have had about her comorbidities and the hospice option. My responsibility was to hear her explore every option, even probe some therapeutic surgeries. Now, if I had cut her off several months ago and told her she must make the hospice decision then, she never would have. She would have died frantically, seeking a forlorn miracle cure. I honored her moral agency by listening carefully and teasing out the choices that were ultimately hers and hers alone to make. What I was listening to was not simply medical prospects and probabilities but a human being wrestling with her death. While metastatic bone cancer might take her body, it would not take her conscience, her free will. The psalmist trusts that God will hear the fear, the moral dilemma, the suffering of the poet. Who does not love someone who listens and understands? And like my friend, the psalmist senses that death has a hold on him. And he wrote, the snares of death encompassed me and I felt the pangs of Sheol. At the time this psalm was written, Sheol had no definitive meaning. It was this vacuous place that everyone went to when they died. It was not beyond the purview of God, but was otherwise inaccessible. It was not a place like the Christian concept of hell with punishing burning fires. I think it was worse than that. Say, Sheol is existential ambiguity. In the ancient Jewish mind, people were truly alive when they served Israel when the community benefited from their place in it. In Sheol, no one has a purpose. There's no meaning to one's life. Values, inconsequential. You are no longer the one who makes or is capable of making moral and ethical decisions. And for the Jew, these are the qualities of an everlasting shame and condemnation. It is not just shame for some dastardly thing that you did or didn't do in your lifetime. It was shame because your life makes no difference whatsoever. That is Sheol. In 48 years of parish ministry and hospital chaplaincy, the people I get most concerned about are the people who have lost the meaning and the purpose of their lives. They are the ones who will have the greatest difficulty recovering from any mental or physical disease you can name. When you die, will the fact that you live mean anything to any human being on earth? Or in the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, do you know that one life has breathed easier because you lived George Bernard Shaw wrote, this is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. The being thoroughly worn out before you're thrown into the scrap heap and being a force of nature instead of a feverish little clod of ailments and grievances complaining to the world you will not devote yourself to being happy. The psalmist believes that God has delivered him from this fate. He vows he will continue to serve God as he serves others. He will be an obedient servant, not only to Torah, 
but also to care for and love his neighbors. The poet knew this truth as well as Jesus, who constantly teaches the models of God and neighbor. Quote, a man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder, a waif, nothing, a no man. Have a purpose in life. And having it, throw such strength of mind and muscle into your work as God has given you, wrote Thomas Carlyle. We are created and nurtured to love human beings and serve their health and their well-being. That's why we're here. I love Mark Twain's quote. There are two important days of your life. The most important day is the day you were born. And the second most important day is when you figured out for what purpose. Let me tell you a story. A man was driving home when he saw an old lady stranded on the side of the road. He saw that she needed help. So he stopped his Pontiac near her Mercedes Benz and got out. He smiled. While he was approaching her, he could see that she was worried, as nobody had stopped for hours. Moreover, he did not look safe, as his appearance was poor and shabby. He could see how frightened she was, so he tried to calm her down. He said, don't worry. My name is Brian Anderson. Now remember that name, Brian, and I'm here to help you. Well, there was a flat tire. The spare was under the car, and he had to crawl under and around and break it off free from its mount. And while changing the tire, he got even dirtier, and his hands were bruised. When his job was done, she asked him how much she owed him for his help. For his help. And Brian smiled, and he said, if you really want to pay me back, the next time you see someone who needs help, give that person the needed assistance, and think of me. That same evening, the lady dropped by a small cafe on the side of the road. It looked kind of dingy, but she was so hungry, she sat at the first table she could find. She saw a waitress, nearly eight months pregnant, wiping her wet hair with a towel. The waitress had a sweet, friendly smile, although she had spent the whole day on her feet. And the lady wondered how someone who was so little can be so kind and giving to a stranger. And then she remembered Brian. After she finished her meal, she paid with a $100 bill. And the waitress went back to the cash register to get some change. And when she came back, the lady was gone. And she left a note on a napkin. You don't owe me anything. Someone helped me earlier today. Just like now, I'm trying to help you. If you really want to pay me back, do not let this chain of love end with you. And the waitress found four more $100 bills at the table. Later that night, the uh, waitress went home. She sat down on the tattered couch and propped her swollen feet up on the coffee table. And she was thinking about that woman and the money she'd left. And she was wondering how could that woman know how much she needed and she and her husband needed the money especially now with a baby about to arrive she knew that her husband worried about that she was glad to tell him some good news and when he got home her husband plopped down on the couch beside her she kissed him and showed him the money she said now everything will be all right i love you Brian Anderson. That old woman, the pregnant waitress, and her blue-collar husband, Brian, are cherished in the eyes of God. And when the psalmist writes of the death of the saints, they are precious in his sight. And it is only because their lives are valuable and he cherishes them. 
this life is valuable. And that value is not proved by their dying, but by their living. I often hear Christians claim that when someone has died, they have gone to a better place. Or they talk as if this life is a trial and they must suffer to get to paradise. Yep, there are many trials in life. Sometimes they get you nowhere. There are plenty of fault lines too. Too much pain and flaw and wretchedness beyond reckoning. But that does not change the life of a single person in the eyes of God. Nothing alters God's determination that this creation is good, very good. The psalmist has known long suffering and several brushes with death, but life is all the more precious. There are yet works to be done, children to nurture, gardens to be planted, and yes, weeded, songs to be composed, poems and stories to be written and told. I think our poet, the psalmist, would add there are prayers of thanksgiving to be offered. The poet pulls the ear of God's pulls close the ear of God and says, Daddy, can I tell you a secret? Thank you. Three fifty three. Lord, listen to your children. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place Lord listen to your children praying send us love send us grace send us grace Before we go to prayer, I just want to let you know that Rosemary Osborne, a resident of North Meadows, uh, died yesterday morning. And so today we will be praying for her family and for all those who have cared for her. Let us go to prayer. We thank you, O God, for coming near to us in so many ways, and we are especially thankful for your faithful and merciful love. Now please open our eyes and our hearts so that we may see you at work in and around us. This afternoon, we lift up to you your beloved world that is also so very broken. We pray for the families who have lost children and loved ones to gun violence, We pray for those who have experienced the devastation of weather. We pray for those who know the destruction of warfare. Please stir us to be part of your healing movement in this world rather than being complicit in its brokenness. Now this afternoon, I pray to you for those who have loved and are now mourning Rosemary. Please comfort each one in the ways that they need in order to receive comfort and healing and peace. Our God, you who are perfectly holy and perfectly just, thank you for listening to us who are not. Thank you for listening to our hearts where our deepest need and desire, fear, and hope lie. Thank you for receiving it all. 
Now open our ears to others that we may also offer the gifts of listening and companionship to one another, that we may be encouraged and given hope and healing. O God, in your mercy, in your love for us, receive the prayers of your people who call upon you. Grant that we may know and understand what things you call us to do and that we may also have through you the grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. We pray, pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Three twenty seven, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.
as you go, may you go loving the Lord because you know that God has heard your voice and your supplication. May you know deep in your soul that God has inclined his ear to you and you may call on him as long as you live. Amen. I invite you to listen to the postlude and then you are dismissed.